Uh, my name is Kaylee Rose. I run a little company called Cairo Media. So let's um, talk through platforms. Um, full disclosure here, there's, there's many, 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 many platforms. We're going to talk through sort of your top performers and your most popular platforms. In my mind, for most small business in Central Texas, your, your top platforms are going to be Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, the takeaway from this is, again, that each platform has a very, very different audience demographic. If you are selling to seniors, um, you know, home services versus selling, you know, high fashion that's geared towards teens and preteens, your platforms are going to look really different, right? Um, this, this chart here sort of breaks down things by platform according to primary user age, gender split, geographic reach, user interests, the amount of conversion you can expect, um, and what kind of content it is useful for. So I, I won't go through all of this because you can look at this, you can take this home and, and kind of you know, dissect it according to your business needs. Um, but it's really important to pay attention to, you know, if you're, again, depending on the type of business that you're running, what are the user interests that do really well? Right? TikTok is really good for viral content, things like challenges, things like comedy, you know, short sketches of people dancing. It's maybe not so good for telling long form stories. On the flip side, if you're looking to appeal to a slightly older demographic, Facebook um, does really well with travel and tourism content, right? Telling that story and, and creating brand awareness based around slightly more elaborate pieces of content. So it is worth thinking about this information, when you think about what is going to be most appropriate for you in terms of content development. Um, and again, it's all about making informed decisions on where you're investing your time. But what does this mean for us? Again, because each platform is so massively different, it takes you deciding what's realistic, let's be honest. Nobody has, I mean, you could spend a full time, 40 hours a week trying to market yourself on social. Nobody, I don't even have that much time, and that's what I do professionally, right? Um, be realistic, figure out what works best for you. Try to, try to focus your efforts. It is so much better to pick one or two platforms and do a really good job of creating content that is engaging and that tells your story and that works towards goals than just put something out every day that's kind of meh, right? What does that say? You know, I'm, I'm sure you guys have all seen those businesses that just post and post and post, and it's just kind of like, half-baked, you know, it's not fun, it's not interesting, it just doesn't even look good. What does that say about the business? Focus your time, you know, pick what's realistic, um, and, and really optimize for one or two. And then you can always build on that, right? Once you kind of get into the groove and you figure out the systems that make it easy to develop that content, then you can expand your approach. But focus, start small. Um, but this is gonna be my number one best practice tip. It's just focus and be realistic. Quality over over quantity. All right, so let's talk through the platforms um, really, really quickly. I don't want to go into too much detail because, again, you're going to have this available to you on the on the PowerPoint. Facebook. For most of us, this should be your bread and butter in terms of content, in terms of posting and reaching audiences. It has amazing potential for brand awareness. Is anybody? Does anybody want to get really brave and kind of define what brand awareness is or talk about that? or even your brand, branding? People recognizing your logo, know what you do, and yeah. it's drawing positive interest in. Yeah, them. yeah, it's creating an, a look and a feel for your business and the associations that your, your brand or your online entity has in the minds of people who might engage, right? So it's subtle, it's telling a story, it's kind of establishing yourself in their minds as something that they wanna follow engage with, maybe buy something from. Um, but, but to start with, it really needs to be that brand awareness. So this is a play that really gets overlooked in social media, in content marketing as a whole, right? Establishing who your brand is, what you stand for, and just creating that awareness in general. So this can be the number one, plat well, maybe not the number one platform, but a very, very big focus um, for, for creating brand awareness is telling your story and reiterating what that brand is about um, on Facebook. You can also therefore build a community around your brand, right? So it's no longer just saying, hey, this is what we do, here's what we stand for, here's our mission statement, we like XYZ or we create this product. It's 
creating a community of followers who value your content because of that, that brand and that branding and the voice and the feel that you put out on social media. Um, so think about you know, when you're creating brand awareness, how can you follow that into building your community? It's also really good for any sort of event marketing. And event marketing doesn't have to be everybody getting together in a room and, and listening to somebody talk. It can be uh, a special deal, a sales day. It can be an online event. It can be an opportunity for them to log in online and see you, you know, give sneak peeks to your product or do a weekly product drop, anything like that, right? Event marketing is very, very powerful. Never underestimate what you can accomplish with that. It's also really good for driving traffic to your website, your store. Um, it's good for directing people from Facebook to other places. So never forget, when you post something on Facebook, where are you sending people? Include that in your post, right? Instagram is probably a close second for the majority of you. Um, it's a very versatile platform. It is a little more visual. It supports less in the way of text and more in the way of visual storytelling. It is also very easy to repurpose your content on Instagram. As we touched on, um, Facebook and Instagram are now both under meta. So it is simpler and easier to take one piece of content that you've created on Instagram, throw it on Facebook. That should always sort of be a part of your process when you're creating content, is making sure that you're creating it for whatever platforms, multiple platforms, so you can reach more people with the same piece of content. Again, so visual, visual platform. It is a very strong storytelling medium. Who here has used a simple photo post, static image? A simple photo post on Instagram? Have you done that? Has anybody done a carousel of photos? Yep. Video reels? Stories? I have a follow-up question to this. Sure. Visualization. Yeah. One of the problems I'm running into is there's only so many photos that you can show of your product or yeah. your service. And yep. Eventually, it starts to become just the same cycle? We're going to touch on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There is a way to sort of develop content categories that can create a cadence and a balance of content. We'll touch on that in a sec. Um, I promise. <laughs> um, but for now, keep in mind that, yeah, your Instagram is very, very visual. It's very versatile. And you actually have a very strong purchasing demographic on Instagram as compared to other platforms. People are more likely to make a purchase when they see something on Instagram. Brand awareness is also a really strong play, um, and this is a great place for product showcases. High-end, beautiful, nice product photography that makes your products look so amazing that people just can't help but buy them. It's also very good for experiential marketing. Um, has anybody played with experiential marketing? Let's talk about what experiential marketing is. As the name would apply, it is basically creating an experience through which you can market a, a product, uh, an experience, a stay, a, you know, a salon experience, anything like that. Experiential marketing shows your people what it is like to walk into the winery. I'm going to pick on Anne for a sec. Walk up to the counter and try the wines and learn about wine club and come to a live music or a wind down Wednesday. So we're showing the experience and enticing people to engage with us and follow us because they like the experience. Let's quickly talk about TikTok. This is a, I feel like this platform is the one that people find most overwhelming. It's definitely the youngest demographic. It's primarily people from the 18 to 24. Um, this is where you're going to find all of your challenge videos. It's all vertical video. Um, so it is very sort of niche in terms of what you can you know, do for visual storytelling. The one thing to keep in mind that people forget when TikTok is considered, um, yes, it's good for things like you know, fashion and apparel and fitness and health and tourism type content. A very, very large portion of your users on TikTok are not in the US. So if you're selling to an international crowd, that's fantastic. If you're trying to target people in the US, maybe don't invest quite so much on that platform. However, um, it's, it's catchy, right? People use a lot of comedy on this platform. It's easy to sit there and watch real kind of engage and watch. So if that works for your business and you can tell a useful story that approximates your goals, absolutely put content on TikTok. And I mean, at worst, you, you, know, you have content that can be used for other platforms, right? You can create TikTok, or you can, excuse me, you can create Instagram Reels. 
while you're creating stuff for TikTok. But again, don't feel overwhelmed if, if that's a platform that you know, doesn't quite fit with your target demographic, it's okay to skip it. If you wanna, you know, quality over quantity. That actually is a nice segue to, to this next slide, which is really about creating a content strategy according to what you really need. Thank <laughs> you.